take violins and we take second to fifth graders and we get them started. We teach them, you know, kind of the rudimentary basics of violin technique, uh, get them playing and get them having fun with music. The program is at a Title I school, so these are lower income students that we're reaching. And we meet with the students four days a week after school and they come for 30 minute time periods. So we see them for a total of two hours a week and they come to our class to learn how to play the violin and we have some instruments now that the Philharmonic has been able to purchase for us. Our kids are becoming successful in something other than school. We're creating a love of music and it's something that will stay with them their whole lives. They're learning the self-discipline, they're learning to practice, uh, they're building their own efficacy and belief in themselves that, you know what, hard work pays off. We're teaching to people at that point of their life, it's a developmental point, you know, things you, you grab onto in elementary school become part of you forever. Some of the things they've done they're never going to forget. We played with the Reno Philharmonic at the, at the Pepper Mill in a big venue, and I mean, they're on that big stage with all this stuff, and it's a whole different part of the world, right, that they don't experience around here. She's doing a lot for all these kids. I mean, he's doing, I mean, a really good job, the teachers and the program. And um, if we can keep the program, you know, we, we got the, uh, the hope. I think that to come into a school like Bernice Matthews where there's a high Latino population is such a wonderful thing to teach these kids at a young age that they can play these instruments and they don't have the finances that they can go out and purchase the instrument and that they can get the private lessons and so we're here to provide that opportunity for them and to also kind of bridge the gap by doing some of their traditional music, doing some mariachi tunes and, and other things like that that help them to realize that um, they can see themselves playing this instrument not only within their culture but within another culture. Just to see the light in their eyes when they learn something new is just so wonderful. When we started doing some of the blues and said, okay, now try to improvise this, it, you know, first they were really nervous and then they got into it and they thought, hey, you know, this is, this is pretty cool, I really enjoy doing this. And what we found is when we reinforce the finger numbers along with the colors, it helps them learn it faster. So the white tape is first finger, the black is second finger, gray is third finger, and the red is fourth finger. We make the kids sing the songs. They learn the finger number uh, before they ever put the f a hand on the instrument to learn the song. So we're making them sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with the finger numbers. And I'm a firm believer that if you can sing it, it's going to make it much easier for you to play it. You know, when they first start, playing in a group is a safe place for them and they can all play together and if they mess up, no one notices because it's a group of people. But as they become a little bit more confident, then we're able to say to them, okay, why don't you play this song for the class? And then it's something they've already played, they already know it, but now they're a little bit more confident to play it alone for the class. Also improvising their own things. We had one of our students who came in one day and earlier this year and said, Miss Carl, Miss Carl, I made up a song. 